Hi, in this video, I want to talk about the reason giver. The mind is, is a reason giver. That's one of the things that it does. It creates thoughts and it goes out and gives us those reasons. It, it, it creates reasons. It's a thought factory. It, it's the producer of ideas. That's what it goes out and does. And because of this, human beings have been able to advance and do amazing things technologically. And at the same time, there are times where it causes us a little bit of grief. We want to talk about the times when it causes us a bit of grief. The same thought factory, the same reason giver that went out and helped a human beings create a computer also goes out and creates uh, the angst that, that human beings and the distress that human beings go out and experience. So I want to show you a little way that we can go out and, and uh, talk about the reason giver or talk about... Uh, the thought factory with our clients and, and to do this in a, in a lighthearted way by using those terms uh, to diffuse the, this process of thoughts reoccurring, coming back, uh, reasons coming in, uh, assumptions arising, judgments and so on. So the reason giver is, is, is good, really good fun to, to work with when we, when we use it with clients. And it looks it looks like this. I, I, I have a um, uh, a question that I ask my clients, and then I get them to go out and respond. And so I say, uh, the dog made the child scream. What happened? And client says, okay, um, the dog bit the child. And I say, great. I'd like you to tell me uh, uh, respond to the next question, but it can't be the same response as the first time. The, jo the dog made the child scream. And I said, okay, um, it uh, rolled on its back and played dead. And so the child screamed. I go, yep, that's great, fantastic. The dog made the child scream. What happened? And I say, uh, the, the child was eating an ice cream the jo and, the, and the dog jumped up and grabbed, grabbed the ice cream and ate it. And so it screamed. And I say, fantastic. And I'll, and I'll do this five or six times, then bang, 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 the mind just goes out and produces the, these reasons. It, it, it's a reason giver. It's a thought factory. It just comes up with a whole lot of things that can go out and, 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 and actually occur. I mean, these are all probable things that the, the dog could have bitten the child, could have you know, stolen the ice cream, or it could have rolled and played dead. All these things are very reasonable possibilities. So it's, it's, a, it's a reason giver. Where this becomes uh, clinically important, apart from the client understanding this and that psychoeducation around that, is when we start looking at uh, how this plays out in some people's lives. So a situation that I encountered with one of my clients was <clears throat> that this person was having difficulty in falling asleep uh, when, whenever their children had um, left the house. Um, uh, with a little bit of, I suppose, uh, further exploration, I found that this person was actually struggling any time that the children weren't at home. So extended a little bit further out in terms of when they were at school um, or when they were at a friend's place, uh, but predominantly is when they were out at night is when the, the, the thought factory appeared or the reason giver showed up. And so the situation was that uh, this person's daughter was supposed to be home at a particular time and uh, the, my, my client was struggling with, with, with this situation and usually what, what the client would do is, is ring and phone and, and uh, try and make contact and message and then contact other friends. But this was starting to cause problems between uh, my client and, and their daughter. So obviously it was more functional to be able to uh, not get so caught up, not so 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 uh, in, you know, consumed with the, these possibilities. And we looked at the actual reasons that uh, happened in this situation. So uh, daughter is actually effectively late, but the reason giver says kidnapped. So they're, all of a sudden they're, they're, they're kidnapped and they, they've been abducted and they're gone and they'll, they'll never see their daughter again. And it's obviously a fair bit of distress uh, shows up. The, often we, we might go out and have 
have the thought of it must be an accident. Um, that's a very common one for, for most uh, parents that something has occurred, something bad has, has happened, they've had an accident. It could also be that their child has become drunk and they've fallen over somewhere um, and, and, and they're all alone in the cold. It could be they might be in hospital and you get the gist. There's, there's all of these things that occur, but where, where this becomes really unfunctional um, or, or, or detrimental is in the relationship between my client and their daughter because they're, they're going out and getting all consumed at home and really, really aroused and upset and anxious and they're not being able to sleep um, and in actual fact uh, can become irritable when their daughter comes home. So there, there can be sometimes arguments that occur as well. Now, what's really interesting is this comes from a place of love. This comes from a place of caring. This comes from, from a place of, of wanting safety for, for their child. And we want to work with that alongside this diffusion. And the, the diffusion is in, the, is in the understanding of this thought factory. It's also in the, in the understanding of it's just going to give us uh, all, these, all these reasons over and over and over again. And generally speaking, they're going to be quite negative in nature or, or destructive in, in, in nature. So uh, we're, we're wanting to understand that this comes from love, this comes from compassion, this comes from caring, and, and to support our client with how else can you be caring, how else can we go out and ensure that your daughter is safe, that she is being looked after and, and, and so on. And there are, there are other ways that are less intrusive that aren't going to mean that uh, my client and their daughter, that, that they disconnect or they have uh, fractures in their relationship. There are ways that we can go out and care. There are ways that we can go out and, and support without having to contact them 10 times, 15 times in, in an evening or phone up their friends, text their friends, put up Facebook messages and so on. Um, that maybe one or two messages might be reasonable. Um, that there are other reasons as well that the reason giver can 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 provide and the point isn't to go out and and um, put one reason up against another it's just to simply diffuse by saying hey it's very normal and natural whenever we care about something whenever we hold a value that's strong that the reason giver shows up and those thought that the thought factory um, tends to give us that that negative side now, I've used the word thought factory a number of times. I've used the word reason giver a number of times, and that's exactly what we want to introduce into sessions with our clients. It promotes diffusion. It, it really it talks about the underpinnings of the mind, that it, we can't stop it from making that commentary, from making those judgments, from assuming that things have happened uh, that are undesirable and so on. So use that with your clients. I think it's a fantastic a uh, nice, gentle, kind way to, to talk about the, the normality of the, these negative thoughts and validate, hey, that seems quite normal and reasonable. It's just that it might not be effective to act on them. So we diffuse in that sense. Hope that's been useful to you. Consider as well what your thought factory is saying um, and the reason giver, how, how quickly it jumps in, even at dinner parties. Um, it'll help you to, to define that more when you're discussing uh, clients' difficulties in session. Take care.